I thank the speaker. I appreciate the time tonight. And it's uh, my hope tonight that we'll have a discussion in our country and in this historic chamber on trade policy. And I'm delighted two of my good colleagues have joined me to carry on this discussion. A key tenet of international economic policy for the Trump administration has been to improve U.S. bilateral and multilateral training arrangements with an eye towards enforcing reciprocity with our trading partners as it relates to tariff levels and the elimination of non-tariff barriers. The goal? To simply achieve more market access for American goods and services. Mr. Trump recognized this, campaigned on free and fair trade, and routinely emphasizes the importance of reciprocity between trading partners. He has stated that he prefers bilateral arrangements over multilateral arrangements by indicating that he did not want to pursue the Trans-Pacific Partnership or the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, uh, one with Asia partners and one with the EU. And while it's true that bilateral treaties are easier to uh, negotiate and acquire, select multilateral arrangements can achieve broad geopolitical and geoeconomic strategic objectives. In the case of TPP, potentially significantly leverage the economic clout of China in Southeast Asia, and obviously link long-standing free trade partners uh, with uh, trans across the transatlantic region with a TTIP. President Trump has also initiated the effort to improve the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, among the United States, Mexico, and Canada. He has called this agreement one of the worst ever, but has offered concrete ways to improve it and modernize it for current conditions in Mexico, Canada, and the United States. And no doubt, these are in fact significantly different than back in 1992 when the NAFTA agreement was arranged. This work continues in earnest, and I'm pleased that the administration has made significant strides in improving NAFTA between Canada and Mexico over the past year, something that I think is very important in my home state of Arkansas where Mexico and Canada are absolutely the largest trading partners that our companies and farmers have in my home state. President Trump's objectives of changing the mercantilistic trade policies of China have proven more challenging. And tonight we'll talk about uh, the president's strategy because we want the United States to have that opportunity in China. We want a more open China trading process. We want more goods and services made in America sold in China. But over the last three decades, China has developed into one of the world's largest and fastest growing economies, but also one of the world's largest protectionist economies, putting up barriers to American goods and services in both tariff manners and in non-tariff ways. We're going to talk about that tonight, and I'd like to start by talking about that uh, with my friend from Ohio. And what's interesting is that this strategy of getting at a more open China, ending a more mercantilistic trading policy with China, has taken a couple of courses of action. One, the President has imposed Section 301 under the Trade Act of 1974 going after China's intellectual property theft in the U.S. Their ability to compel U.S. companies or companies from the European Union to give up their intellectual property in order to do business in China. Clearly a violation. And so the president has proposed a 301 investigation and tariffs related to that. He's also imposed tariffs under the 1962 Act for national security purposes across the board on steel and aluminum. All countries, all products. And that's very challenging, Mr. Speaker, because if the real issue is getting at China, the world's largest subsidizer and dumper of steel and aluminum, this may not be 
the most successful strategy to accomplish that and could in fact be a distraction from our ultimate objective in opening China. So I'd like to yield, uh, Mr. Speaker, some time to my friend from Ohio and have his perspective on uh, tariffs and trade and how we can improve and be more successful in getting the outcomes that, that we want. 